So the sun shines, its energy comes from nuclear fusion. How? What is nuclear fusion? How does it work? So let's talk about nuclear fusion in the sun. What is nuclear fusion and how it works? Okay, so it's a nuclear process. Chemistry is when you take different types of atoms and you stick them together in different ways. You take carbon and oxygen and stick together to make carbon dioxide and we call that fire. So nuclear fusion in the sun is where we're not sticking types of atoms together in different ways. We're changing the types of atoms themselves. We're, we're taking one type of atom and transmogrify them into other types of atoms. The overall reaction is you take groups of four hydrogen atoms and turn them into one helium atom. Now let's work out the details of this because this is fascinating and interesting and important. So we've got our four hydrogen atoms. Every hydrogen atom has, uh, what does it have? It has a proton at the nucleus and an electron orbiting around that. And of course it's down there where it's really, really hot. So the electrons are in a, it's a plasma state so the electrons can break free. But in general, what do we got? So on the left hand side we here, we have four protons, each one has a positive charge, and four electrons, each one has a negative charge. So that's what's going on here. And then out the other side, what's a helium atom? Well a helium atom, a typical helium atom, has two protons, two neutrons in the nucleus, so here we have two protons, two neutrons, and then this is orbited by two electrons. And already we can see something strange here. In order to do this, I mean, okay, the reason why this takes place in the core of the sun is that's the only place where there's so much pressure and heat. That's the hottest part of the sun where there's the greatest pressure. There's the weight of the whole sun crushing that down there. And somehow this is the, the core is the place where all that heat and pressure and all that weight is enough to crush groups of four hydrogen atoms still close together so much that they can turn into these, these helium atoms. And that's the source of the sun's energy. But... How does this work? We start out with four protons, but over here, we only have two. We start out with four electrons, but over here, we only have two left. And then there we got these crazy neutron things. Where did the neutrons come from? What's the story with that? Well, there's some details which need to take place in here. In order to do this, well, first of all, remember, electrons are, are, have, have low mass. A neutron and a proton have about 2,000 times more mass than the electron. That's why the electrons orbit around the protons and rather than vice versa. The protons have the mass. That's where the mass in the nucleus is. So in order for this to happen, what's got to happen is you've got to get two of these protons and turn them into neutrons. Two neutrons. Now, the problem with that is, well, if you take a, prot a proton, every proton has a positive charge. A neutron has no charge. So, and you can't destroy charge, it's got to go somewhere. You can't create, create charge out of nothing. So, in the process, in order to run this reaction, turning hydrogen into helium, you got to take these protons and turn them into neutrons. So where does the positive charge go? Well, it has to, you, you create another particle to carry off that charge. And you know what that particle is? That particle is an anti-electron. Also called a positron, it's a particle of antimatter. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. Antimatter is real. It does exist. We can create it in the laboratory easily all the time. For every particle of matter, there's a corresponding particle of antimatter uh, that has an opposite charge. And so if you bring together an electron and an anti-electron and they reach each other, then what happens is their, their mass is transformed into energy. By Einstein's great equation, E equals mc squared, that means energy can be turned into mass, mass can be turned into energy, and so if you bring together a particle and its antiparticle together, they will turn themselves into energy, and that's where the sun's energy comes from. There's, a, there's even one other thing here. So in order to, you know, your proton turns into a neutron, the positive charge goes to these two anti-electrons, these two positrons, and when you do this, you also, well, okay, you, you, you had... You didn't have any electron sort of particles, so you need, uh, well, these are called leptons, so you need a couple other particles to carry some other stuff away, so you also make two neutrino particles, and so these and neutrinos are really interesting. And so, and so this, is, this is the overall reaction, so you need this to happen. In order to take your groups of four hydrogen atoms together and squish them so hard to make them into helium atoms, in the process, you've got to take two protons, turn them into two neutrons, two positrons, two anti-electrons, and two neutrinos.
Now, what this means, do you know what that means? The sun runs by antimatter. The sun is a great, amazing, powerful antimatter engine in this sort of a way. And so that's what happens in here. And then, so what happens, this reaction goes, these two anti-electrons are going on. They meet two of your normal electrons, and that's why you only end up with two normal electrons left at the end of that. That's where the sun's energy comes from. That's, that's the energy part of this, where these electrons and the anti-electrons meet. They transform themselves into energy in the core, and then that's turned into light and heat and all sorts of interesting things. And then that energy flows out through the radiation zone, through the convection zone to the photosphere where it's turned into light. And it shines out and then it reaches us here and then plants grow and then we have food to eat, which is a good thing. One more note about these neutrinos. In the process of running this nuclear reaction, so this reaction is called you know, nuclear fusion. In the process of running this reaction, we need to create, we must, must... The sun must create neutrinos. Neutrinos. And neutrinos are fascinating particles. So this was predicted way back years ago. They're doing the nuclear fusion. They're like, gosh, if we're, if we're going to do these equations, all this sort of thing, there must be neutrinos coming out of the sun. They were discovered in the laboratory and all this. Neutrinos are fascinating particles because they don't, they have very low mass and they have no charge at all. And that's, that's, that's an interesting thing. You see, matter becomes, appears to be solid because it has charge to it. The reason why I can't take my hand and whap, put it right through this wall or this board, the reason I can't do that is not really because my hand is a solid object. It, the hand really isn't a solid object. It's mostly empty space. What gives this an illusion of being solid, what, I, what gives this being the illusion, what creates the illusion of solidity, is the fact that there's charge here, that my, my, there are these atoms with their you know, neutrons and protons in the center, and then these electrons around that, the electrons have negative charge. And so if you're very far away, then, well, the plus and minus charges balance out, and I don't feel any force between my hand and the wall. But as I put my hand close to the wall, well, let's see, the electrons are on the outsides of the atoms. So if I've got, uh, got you know, the plus, plus charges in the middle, the electrons on the outside, the electrons touch each other first, and they repel each other. And that's what gives them a solidity. That's why I can't pass my hand right through the wall, even though the wall and my hand are mostly empty space. Um, if, you, if you took an atom and you made it the size of a basketball, that nucleus would be so small you couldn't see it with the, with, with the naked eye. I mean, it's really, atoms are mostly empty space, but it's charge. It's these electric charges, it's these electrons on the outside of the atoms repelling each other. Negative charges repel other, that makes things be solid. Neutron, neutrinos do not have charge, which means they can go right through ordinary matter. So you create all these neutrinos in the center of the sun during this nuclear fusion process. The sun is you know, doing huge amounts of nuclear fusion all the time. And then these neutrinos can, can then go straight through the whole rest of the sun and go all the way right to here on Earth where we can detect them. Neutrinos have no charge, so they pass through ordinary matter. So then people set up detectors in order to find neutrinos from the sun to test our theories. I mean, because what I've outlined for you about nuclear fusion is all just theory. Nobody's ever seen nuclear fusion in the sun. Observationally, all we can see is the photosphere. You can't see anything deeper than that. So, I mean, what I've told you at this point is, is theory. It's a fairy tale. It's, it's an idea which makes sense, but in science, we're, science is all about skepticism. We have to test our ideas. We have to constantly, rigorously put them to the test. Every theory must make specific predictions I can test and verify. So they said, all right, if this nuclear fusion in the sun theory is correct, if that's really how the sun generates its energy, then the sun should be emitting huge amounts of neutrinos out into space. And so detectors were built here on Earth and starting in the 1960s trying to pick up neutrinos for the sun. Um, for many years, uh, they weren't getting as many neutrinos as they thought they should. Uh, turned out neutrinos are slightly more complicated particles than anybody guessed. There are actually three types of neutrinos and they were skipping between the different sorts of things. But now we can detect the different, now we understand neutrinos and can detect them better. They find the right number of neutrinos coming out of the sun as predicted by the nuclear fusion in the sun theory. And so there's another way of looking inside the sun. You know, helioseismology, listening to sound waves bouncing around in the sun, tells us a lot about the sun structure, and the neutrinos do too. They tell us that the nuclear fusion, which this theory says is going on in the sun, is really there. It's really taking place, and that really is why the sun shines at a very deep sort of a level.